Welcome and thanks for joining us. My guest today is Matt Soltis, the Vice President of Cloud Solutions at GDIT. And we've been talking about cloud, this whole cloud exchange, and the healthcare domain is a really interesting one because there's so much innovation going on in the technology and on the care side of healthcare. Matt, let's start with an overview of what you see as cloud and health IT all coming together. What's, what are the trends there now? Tom, what an exciting time to look at the intersection between these two areas, both healthcare IT and, uh, and cloud. There's maybe three themes that have really come up recently. First is COVID. Second is uh, how organizations are dealing with compliance. Things like HIPAA and standards there driving cybersecurity. And third is the innovations that are coming from cloud technology driving healthcare outcomes. Starting with COVID, there's really no industry that hasn't been affected. If we think about healthcare specifically, all the things about mobile care and remote care, uh, not a lot of doctor's, uh, doctor's appointments or, uh, or online sessions, uh, or there's been a lot of online sessions recently from, uh, from mobile care and remote care. If you think about operations in the cloud, if I can't get to my desk or if I can't get to the data center, that's changed the way we think about technology. And probably one of the most exciting spaces is what's happening in research and cloud access. Whether that's something simple like I want to find a location for a COVID test, and I want to see how long the line is, so I'm going to Google that. Or what organizations like Johns Hopkins are doing with visualization of data and business intelligence around all the masses of COVID data that we have. NIH is a good example of some data sharing here around COVID. They have a commons platform where researchers can get together and share data in a common standard, some common infrastructure. It used to be that you have 14 researchers doing research, there would be 14 different systems, 14 different databases, and I would either have to send you a hard drive, Tom, and you would mail me my data, or I'd have to take a day or two to download the data. With a commons, they've democratized both the access and some of the standards for data in the cloud. That's accelerating research outcomes. And I wanted to, just to interject here for a moment, is it seems like the cloud is almost a substitute for what used to require supercomputers in many applications, including research large data sets. We're absolutely seeing that, both with the data ac uh, sets and the access. Let's talk about cyber compliance. Those are ongoing issues, but the cloud has made that somewhat more easy, maybe a little bit easier to keep HIPAA compliance, privacy and all that. Well, payers and providers have struggled, as well as technology providers, for a number of years around HIPAA. Um, there's been cost, there's been infrastructure, there's been a lot of processes to set up. On the positive side, what we see now is a lot of the cloud providers and the service providers have raised the standards. So if you want to use data or access uh, infrastructure in the cloud, it's now HIPAA compliant or can support your HIPAA outcomes. That's advancing the cyber posture of a lot of customers. One of the areas where everyone's struggling, especially in the cloud space, is around staff. In the, in the cloud healthcare space, having staff to do cyber compliance, um, cyber infrastructure, compliance standards is a struggle for everyone. We just saw President Biden just recently put a new set of standards out and cloud providers like Google, Microsoft, and AWS are also investing in this space, offering free training, uh, cloud capabilities to raise those standards. And with respect to this idea of compliance that has been a very human intensive activity, is it fair to say that in the cloud now, you can almost have a compliance engine that operates across all of the data that is stored in one place instead of federated across multiple locations? And therefore, and I guess this kind of brings the technology and the compliance idea together, as you mentioned earlier, this one compliance engine, if you will, for a set of logic can make this whole task much more centralized, much more easy to keep your thumb on the governor there and also speed it all up. I recently talked to an agency head and he said, hey, years ago, our data was everywhere. We didn't have standards. It was in a lot of different locations. There wasn't a standard security policy. Because of the driver of HIPAA and consolidating this data, my data is in one, one space, one set of tools, one set of security standards, and one policy in the cloud that drives those kind of outcomes, Tom. All right, so the underlying implication of everything we've talked about so far is that data is a large quantity. There's lots of it and it's growing all the time. Give us down to the practical level, what are some of the strategies you think are useful for getting this data organized, migrating it to a cloud with some sort of cost control with respect to uploading and downloading the egress costs and so forth and, and general storage architecture? 
When we talk to federal customers, over 40% of them are experiencing issues with data migration, Tom, as you alluded, and the data standards once the data is there. And in many cases, these aren't technical problems. So some of the strategies to think about for organizations to look for, especially with healthcare data, first is this discussion of ownership. Who owns the data? Who's going to consume it? How is it going to be paid for? How do you do backups? And who takes those roles with an ownership matrix? Second thing to think about is, is the architecture. There's a lot of best practices architecture for cloud data, cloud file data lakes. Things to think about in structured and unstructured data, hot and cold data, how do I want to archive, data pipelines to move that data in and data out, as well as performance and retention. If that infrastructure is in place with your architecture, you can then do some higher level activities like machine learning, artificial intelligence, data visualization. We talked about and security and, and compliance. And the last sort of theme here is, of course, technology. If you have ownership, you have good architecture, you have security standards, the technology then becomes a little easy. The big advantage of the cloud is you can move up the stack and not have to worry about some of the plumbing pieces that you used to have to con be concerned about. CMS is a good example of this with the retiree drug subsidy system. This is an agency that's really taken intentional thought around their architecture, their data, and their standards. And GDIT has been helping them build some of this architecture to run in the cloud. The cloud enables them to, uh, to get better data quality, speed performance, and testing. And they've found they're able to run 10 times faster than the legacy mainframe with a substantial savings in cost, over a million dollars over the lifetime of this infrastructure. Because a lot of agencies mention that they want to avoid the costs of using data if it involves downloading it back after they have uploaded it. So in the case of a CMS, that type of application, do they bring the compute up to the cloud where it exists with the data, and then you get some kind of an answer back as opposed to downloading all the data from a storage unit That's absolutely the a use case, Tom. Yeah, you do the, you do the analysis and uh, machine learning and intelligence close to the data, the concept of data gravity. Got it. So what are some of the other best practices for using cloud, or now cloud-hosted data? What we've seen from agencies and organizations is start by asking some strategic questions about the mission outcomes first. What do you want the data to do to drive the mission outcome? Who's controlling the data? How is it managed? Can you use a SaaS or a cloud service to do some of the infrastructure things that you used to have to manage yourself? What can I do faster, better, and cheaper in the cloud than I used to have to do on-prem? And how do I democratize or share that data around the cloud? We encourage two other things for organizations looking at data and healthcare data in the cloud. First is to look at solution use cases, sometimes in a parallel industry, Tom. Things like high performance computing, anomaly detection, image recognition. There may be other agencies or organizations doing this, and some of the cross-government communities have been really successful here looking at those use cases where you can apply that technology and that solution to healthcare data. And the last piece is really around reference architectures. GDIT has a secure cloud native data architecture, reference architecture, as do many of the cloud providers, leveraging those reference architectures to acquire, store, transform, analyze, and consume data is really a way to get started and down the path there. CMS is on this journey with legacy systems, taking data and moving it into the cloud. They've established some cloud native architectures to host and manage their data. They process over uh, over five million claims a day. And once that data is in the cloud, they're able to do some really intelligent fraud detection and systems in the cloud. CMS has been able to save over $3 billion in healthcare claims because the data is in the cloud and they have the analytics close to it. Well, do they upload all of the data? Should an agency simply put all of the data available in the cloud? Or is there some more fine grain strategy you should use to make some efficiency here with respect to the cloud resource? You're asking a key question, Tom, and where does the data need to be based on where the compute is? And in some cases, where does the data need to be based on where we need to process the data? If you're harvesting data on IoT devices in the hospital or at the edge, you may want to do some pre-processing there. If you're doing large analytics workloads, in most use cases, it makes sense to put it into the cloud. All right, but let's move on to another big issue with respect to healthcare in the cloud, and that is the I guess it's taking a heck of a long time, longer than anyone hoped. I think we're a decade into this federal push for the electronic health record. And now you see some of the big civilian and DOD agencies that deliver health on literally a healthcare 
a electronic health record migration. But what are some of the challenges with EHRs, especially you might want to comment on the need for interoperability of care delivered by the federal agency, and sometimes in the case of veterans, half of their health care might be delivered outside of VA, for example. I guess there's a lot of questions in there, but let's we've, talk about EHRs and what some of the best practices there are with respect to cloud. We've seen some great advancements in electronic health records uh, with interoperability and standardization, especially the strong push for a cloud presence of the data. Hospitals and health systems are driving this, as well as the government policies and some of the standards you alluded to. A couple of the challenges we've seen, first is all of the legacy data around health records is really around one specific system or solution. The payment, the healthcare claim, the PACS imaging. If you want to look at a holistic system of who's Matt Soltis around an electronic health record, very often there are five or six places you need to go and you need to integrate all that data. All those legacy systems weren't built to share and they weren't built on any common standards or platforms. Organizations are having this question of, do I build it, do I buy it, or do I integrate it? And in some cases, this, the answer is really all three of those at the same time. Interoperability is really key based on standards. The 21st Century CARES Act requires organizations to lower barriers to healthcare records and some of the standards around them. One of the places we've seen this on the GDIT side is our work we've done with the Indian Health Service with their healthcare record systems. We've been supporting them for two decades, and they're underway with a set of cloud modernizations. What's really interesting with Indian Health is they have disparate systems. In some cases, they actually need to process data and they have remote accessibility where they need to do things not in the cloud, then move it to the cloud. The choices they're making around these architectures enable them to really focus on the higher order systems, not just the plumbing or hospital IT. And a lot of what you say, though, also implies the need not just for a data sharing idea or scheme or setup, but also maybe revised workflows and automation systems to enable some of the sharing. Otherwise, it becomes a manual exercise. So talk about maybe the idea of updating workflows and business processes as you incorporate the cloud more into the healthcare domain. I think the standards are pushing these in some different ways where different applications, whether it's a PAC system, a healthcare system, a medical record system, uh, enable that, that integration, Tom. There's also the people and the process integration that happens in a context of healthcare data and the healthcare outcomes. Yeah, otherwise you're just automating cow paths if you don't go with the business process reorientation along with the cloud reorientation. Fair? Absolutely. All right, and I wanted to go back to another point you mentioned earlier, and that is the need to establish ownership of the data, how it will be used. And the implication there is you need some kind of a governance overlay, a policy framework, if you will, for a lot of this migration. Maybe comment on the need to do that and maybe how industry can help, and maybe there are models in other domains you've worked with. Yeah, there's two themes there. Uh, having an official role to own and manage and charter, chaperone and govern the data is one. The chief data officer is a, is a new role in many organizations and uh, many agencies that actually takes a data first policy to, uh, to cloud and cloud architectures. Someone that has the authority to determine data standards uh, and data uh, outcomes and usage models across the organization is one. Two, uh, when that organization sits at the same level as technology and the mission owner and the application owner, that provides the best outcome where they have the same authority and the same strategies. Uh, as well as very important in the public sector and in the commercial space, the budget and the authority and control. We've seen some use cases, organizations like pharmaceutical firms, where they set up a chief data officer and they actually make a strategic choice to do data migration to the cloud first. They say, hey, we're going to move to the cloud. They're not moving an application first, but they're moving the data first. And they have, for example, 40 petabytes of, uh, of statistical analysis gen genomics data, and they move that data into the cloud the data goes first and then they string the applications around it. Other organizations say, hey, I have petabytes of healthcare data. We've backed it up into the cloud. What can I do with that data in the cloud with a data lake? How do I analyze that data in the cloud? And then the other issue with data lakes and data lakes in the cloud, wherever they're hosted, is the need to normalize the data because you have such a variety of formats coming in. Medical devices generate data. EHRs generate data that may incorporate some of the data from health devices, and on and on it goes. Plus, there's unstructured data many times. You still have doctor's notes in some cases. And so what are some of the issues with respect to getting the data so that it interoperates at the application level 
and especially at the analytical level or the predictive analytics level. Solution providers and cloud providers are really helping here with some standards across the board and solutions that get you up the stack. Amazon is a good example. They just announced the Amazon Health Lake. It's designed for healthcare and life sciences to better manage their data with HIPAA eligible services for healthcare and life sciences to give a complete view and an integrated system view of patient populations and health data. And it operates on standards like the FHIR standard, the Fast Healthcare Inter Interoperability Resources standard. When that data is there in the cloud, then you can do analytics and machine learning and all kinds of value-added services on it. And that really gets more value out of the data you might have had in the first place in the old paradigms. All right, and I want to talk about the issue of outcome-based medicine or person-centered medicine. There's a lot of words for it. It seems like this is coming to the forefront in thinking about healthcare delivery, just as many of the technologies we've talked about are also coming to the forefront. And really, isn't that the objective of all of this, is some relation to the outcome of healthcare delivery itself? Yeah, Tom, what's so interesting about the cloud is uh, it's both a business model right, um, a payment model, a structure model for how you run, uh, run uh, operations. It's also a set of technologies. And the cloud is actually driving some ways to think about this. Rather than in a cloud space for outcomes, run my infrastructure, have power, uh, run operations, run networks, I actually want, for example, in healthcare, I want to pay per image stored, per medical record, per patient visit. That kind of outcome, the patient visit, the successful uh, data and uh, set analyzed, is very different than building all the infrastructure and tracking and managing it. On the technology side, we've seen cloud accelerate those outcomes. We want better doctors. So HHS has set up the National Practitioner Data Bank for hospitals and doctor's offices to look at malpractice backgrounds of doctors before they hire them. We want to fight disease. So CDC is looking at uh, different mechanisms to share epidemiology and outbreak data in the cloud extensively used in the context of COVID. We want better medicines. The FDA is developing all kinds of technologies for tracking adverse events with drugs and therapeutics in the cloud, and they can do it faster and better because the data is available and they can analyze it in real time. Yeah, you've mentioned FDA all the way through agencies like VA and CMS that either deliver or pay for healthcare or both. And that's a long complex of agencies from you know, the FDA is approving drugs and testing drugs and clinical trials and so on, NIH. So uh, what I'm hearing is that there is a much more of a horizontal integration of the federal agencies that are involved in healthcare from the outset of a healthcare even being developed, FDA, to delivery of it, VA, or paying for it, CMS, on the other end. And it seems like cloud is in some ways enabling that and driving that forward, that, that horizontal integration. The standards, the infrastructure, the data sharing, and then government being attentional with things like data.gov um, and some of the standards across government agencies are helping drive those outcomes, Tom. Yeah, data.gov, you mentioned that goes back to the Obama administration. I haven't checked in on the progress of that, but it's probably something that you would advise clients to avoid replicating data lakes, data stores, data sites because in many ways, if you have too many of them, then you have nothing without the metadata to try to tie them together. So maybe comment on the idea of getting this centralized and, and unified in some way so that we don't have islands of data that are become obsolete just by neglect. What we've seen successful with data.gov and other organizations is both the government, commercial providers, uh, and industry collaborating together. One on the infrastructure, two on the standards, and three on the use patterns of how that data can be used and consumed. Sharing use cases across the board has been a best practice. And what about the integration of, and we touched on this briefly a couple of minutes ago, integration of external providers of healthcare and all of the records and data systems that they engender and the federal delivery systems, the Indian Health Service, VA, CMS, some of the defense medical establishments the idea of integrating the interior of the government to the exterior of the commercial medical space, I would think is maybe a, a missing gap here or a gap that needs to be filled. CMS is a great example of that with a chronic conditions warehouse. This is an infrastructure that's set up to improve care uh, and tracking of costs of chronic conditions. 
Tom, and this CCW warehouse is also a research uh, database and a research set of infrastructure. It's for all the Medicare data, uh, and researchers can actually access that in an anonymized fashion. GDIT has helped them move their data lakes into the cloud. And they went from a legacy infrastructure into the cloud with a set of open standards. Now any university, any researcher, as well as industry can look at all of this medical data, all the Medicare data anonymized, and predict trends, do analytics, look at different themes, both in the quality of care, or the cost of care, and how that care is managed across the board. That's a gold mine, both for industry, for researchers, and for the government. Because the policy trend for CMS, really for now three administrations, has been to drive payment based on outcomes, as opposed to, as you said, payment based on number of visits or other easy to measure metrics that don't necessarily relate to whether the patient lived or died. And so it sounds like the whole cloud idea then can really vastly accelerate the, the carrying out of that type of policy where you're paying for outcomes as opposed to paying for transactions. Yeah, absolutely. And one small, simple example, once that data is in the cloud, you can develop artificial intelligence and machine learning models on it. Uh, a simple example of that, just in the care space, uh, is what the Veterans Administration is doing with deep learning and image classifiers around computer vision to help physicians recognize skin lesions. The, the physician in the field takes a picture of a skin lesion and they send that into the cloud. A machine learning artificial intelligence model that uses some deep learning predicts the, uh, the type of skin lesion that is, classifies it, and gives a preliminary set of diagnostics both to the physician and the dermatologist for follow-on care. That's only possible with cloud technology, with machine learning, and that real-time delivery of care in the field. And that's an example of the increasing advent of telecare, healthcare, that is not in person. And that's really a burgeoning area that we need to maybe rethink the old model of simply talking to the doctor on the phone or talking to the doctor in a video conference call. It's way beyond that now, isn't it? Yeah, CMS and the medical insurers have relaxed some regulations to enable that to be possible. COVID actually was a driver of that. And the new standards the federal government has put in place for, uh, for patients to have access on their smartphones or, uh, or interoperability is also driving this. Tom, I experienced this firsthand just a couple weeks ago where my daughter smashed up her foot, broke a number of bones. We were at the second specialist, walked into the specialist office and the doctor said, where did you get your x-rays? I told the doctor, uh, and within a matter of a minute, the x-rays were up in high resolution on a screen, and we laughed about the old days when we used to go, have to go pick up films. That's both uh, interoperability, that's mobility, and that's patient access all in real time facilitated by the cloud. All right, so any final comments here on the cloud before we uh, break? So one of the things we're seeing in, with GDIT, helping customers move and accelerate outcomes in the cloud is two big trends for those cloud migrations. One is to move the applications first into the cloud. Uh, that's looking at the architecture, the infrastructure, and the platforms and getting them into the cloud quickly, like the National Library of Medicine moving into the cloud. Uh, that's an app-first strategy. We also talked about a data-first strategy, Tom, where that data lake or the data architecture goes to the cloud first. At GDIT, we're enabling both those motions to get into the cloud and get there faster. We have a cloud framework called Move to the Cloud. It's an approach to help customers get into the cloud. And we've moved thousands of applications and workloads into the cloud along four key themes. And these are some strategies that all agencies can leverage and use to get there faster and more efficiently. First, to think about your strategy for cloud. What kind of outcomes do you want to accomplish? Second, how do you do discovery and assessment of your infrastructure? What apps do I move? What do I replatform? What do I rehost? What do I actually retain on site? making a decision on what apps to move when. And third, that migration process itself. GDIT, industry, and the cloud providers have a number of tools to accelerate that, as well as investment and funding for proof of concept, migration, business just justifications. And lastly, it's crucial, once you get into the cloud, you have to optimize and organize your infrastructure. About 40% of customers actually, once they get workloads to the cloud, do not optimize. And that's a cost loss uh, or a drain on the, on the final budget. And a final question too, are clouds becoming more interoperability cloud provider to cloud provider? We're seeing that for trend. For the agencies that are in the hybrid mode. We're seeing that trend well, first with data, uh, as well as some of the standards of the technologies underneath the cloud. Moving containers across clouds, 
moving frameworks for automation and orchestration across cloud providers. Those standards are coming out now. All right, so it's an exciting time to be in medicine and in cloud. No question. All right, I want to thank today's guest is Matt Soltis. He is the Vice President of Cloud Solutions at GDIT. I'm Tom Temin. You're listening to Federal News Network. We'll go back to the studio now for what's next in the Cloud Exchange.